I'm gonna put you closer. All right. So, my ideal first day out. Oh, I dropped the phone. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the crash? Yeah, I was gonna say, you don't even need to edit that out. Oh, maybe I do. Hey loves, it's Miro. Welcome back to my channel. She's back. So it's Friday night, right after the gym. I had just enough time to shower, throw on makeup, and throw this beauty on because I have real life around YouTube. <laughs> A lot of real life around YouTube. So I had a call set up with Adam and it's all about his ideal first day outside of prison. This is the second time we're filming this video and it's funny because, well it's not funny, I kind of saved my booty. The day that I accidentally, I accidentally deleted the footage but it wasn't the best call. It was on a Sunday afternoon, I was tired, I had been out all day, I wasn't very energetic, there were people downstairs, I was quiet, he wasn't really himself, so I was about to email him and tell him, oh my god, I'm so sorry I was making room on my SD card for the next call that we were about to do, which was our first kiss in prison, and I deleted the footage. But I didn't have to because he emailed me and said, I really didn't like the way that that turned out, can we do it again? And I was like, sure, <laughs> yeah, no problem. If you want to, if you need to, that's fine. And then of course, of Remember the video about all the speeding tickets that I got? If you don't, I'll post it up there. But I always call myself out to him. I always snitch on my own self to him. So I was like, oh, by the way, I deleted all the footage. So you're, you're gonna have to do it again anyway. <laughs> so without wasting any more time or being any more weird than I'm being right now, glad you guys love me by now. Here is Adam's ideal first day home. Okay, go ahead. I'm just gonna hold it. All right, my ideal first day out is probably a little bit different than what most people would expect. First and foremost, you know, I thought a lot about this, and, and I have a perfect picture in my mind of, you know, what it'll be like to walk out this front door. And ideally, when I walk out, you're there, my mom, John, Sean, and maybe a few other people that have supported us over the years and who helped make this happen. You know, I'd love for my dad to be there, but I just don't think that would be possible, especially if it's on short notice. But it's really about, you know, those people, you and I, and, you know, the people that I'm closest to. Do you want to explain who John and Sean are? Are they our kids? <laughs> well, John, John Ponder, CEO of Hope for Prisoners. John has obviously been an incredible advocate for many years and someone that I was with in Allenwood who is now very, very successful through his organization, Hope for Prisoners in Las Vegas, and who's created some, some great opportunities for us. The other person is Sean Hopwood, who some people might know from his appearance on 60 Minutes. Sean similarly was charged he was charged with bankruptcy. This call is from a federal prison. And received only one 924C, so he was able to get out, start a new life, went to law school. He is now a law professor at Georgetown University and a tireless advocate for prison reform, sentencing reform, and a personal friend who has become my attorney as well and is currently helping us bring this thing to a resolution. So ideally, having all of us together would be, you know, many years in the making. And if we could go into town, instead of, you know, being stuck on the road, you know, traveling to go someplace, Bradford's right down the road. And considering that you've been coming out here all these years, nearly a decade now. I'm a Bradford like expert. Town, you are definitely an expert on Bradford. And I want to be able to see a little bit of the town, see what you've told me about. And for all of us, really just to be able to sit down, have a nice meal together, probably, I mean, the one restaurant in town is Beef Eaters, right? Literally. I'm not so worried about the food. You know, a lot of people, like, it's all about the food. Like, I can't wait to get out and have this or have that. The food is great. Listen, anything after prison food for 20 years <laughs> is, is going to be delicious. 
delicious. The food at Beef Eaters is very good. Okay, well, I, I'm sure it is. And anything but, you know, fast food. I want something good, something healthy. And most importantly, I want us to be able to sit down, all of us together, and just share a meal and, and relax and, and be together. You know, while we're there, uh, again, with us not really knowing where we're going or what the timeline is, ideally, I'd like to... You know, be able to get a room right there in town so that we can all spend some time together throughout the day, just not have to rush. And honestly, one of the things I really want to do is jump in the pool. I haven't been able to swim or been underwater in, in all these years, and I that's something that, for whatever reason, you know, has been on, on my mind. I'd definitely like to take a swim before the day is over, but really ending the day with you and I, having some time alone together, not having to worry about anyone or anything else, and us just being able to have that, you know, it's, it's been so many years, and honestly, that encapsulates the whole first day, it's really just about the people, it's about being with you guys, us being together, I mean, that's the main thing that comes to mind, now, you know, it's, it's really a very simple vision, but there's two things that I should make note of, which is probably, as I, you know, started out saying, my vision's a little bit different than most. I don't have a home to go back to. You know, there's, there's no place, there's no city, there's no town that I really call home. I don't have a house. You know, my parents both live in the Midwest. And I think that's a benefit. I think I'm really fortunate because I don't have any anchors, nothing pulling me or tying me down to my past. It's all about us being able to move forward and, you know, not put all this totally behind us because I don't want to forget about this. But we have some amazing opportunities waiting for us out west. And, you know, everything's about moving forward. So the second part of that also is... It relates to something that one of the guys in here said to me recently. You know, there's a lot of people that make comments to me all the time. I'm like, man, you're, you're out of here. You're going to be home soon. You're getting out. And I appreciate their enthusiasm and their optimism. And this one guy just struck me that, you know, he's like, man, you're going to get out. You're going to go crazy. You're going to have to party for days, man. And I'm like, uh. Do you know how old I am? I kind of thought he was joking. What's that? Do you know how old I am? <laughs> I guess, though, though, yeah. in a serious tone, like, does that even matter when, it, like, a 60, 70-year-old man is getting out of prison? Like, just, is it common for them to not want to? Like, arrested development, right? We hear about that all the time. Is it common for somebody yeah. 40, 50, 60, or above to really want to go back and hit the street and make up for all that lost time? Honestly, for most people, yeah. It, it's not about... Like picking, necessarily picking up where you left off, I guess as you get older, some of that, you know, you realize that that's not going to happen. But I think pretty much for everyone in here, like we're conditioned, part of the social conditioning here is, and I think it really stems from feeling like you spend all these years oppressed, feeling like somebody's always got their foot on your neck. The moment you get out that door, like, it's like you're finally free. And, and granted, I mean, I'm definitely going to be elated to be out. But I've given this a lot of thought. And I'm going to approach it much differently. But for most guys, you know, I, I understand where that guy was coming from. You know, at first when, when he said it to me about going out partying and everything, like, I thought he was kidding. And then I realized he wasn't. And initially I started to take offense. Because I took it personal. I was like, oh, wait a minute. What have I done or said? make you think that like that was even an option but I caught myself right because I understand that's just that's the mentality of almost everyone all of us in here and I was there I mean I did that remember you know I was incarcerated from 18 to 21 and that was definitely my mentality like man I can't wait to get out and be free and, and to, to just like let loose but, I mean, because of my experience, because of having gone through this before and seen how it turned out, because 
because honestly, I didn't even really give it much of a chance. I never acclimated when I got it. This call is from a federal prison. I mean, if we're being honest, within 30 days, like, I was off and running. And I never stopped until I caught this case. So I've had plenty of years to think about, you know, my mistakes and, and, and what I need, what is healthy, what we all need. And, you know, I'm far more prepared because I've taken the time to really think about it this time around. But most guys don't give that much thought. You know, everything, the only thought that exists, you know, while most guys are in here, is about getting to that release date. It's about getting out the door. So I realized last time I was ill-prepared, you know, I was 21 years old, things are going to be much different this time. Especially because of the position I'm in now. I know how many people look to me uh, as an example, look to me for guidance. I feel the weight of that responsibility on my shoulders. You know, I know that I have an opportunity to inspire countless others who are similarly situated with my story of success. They need to see, and not just hear, but to see that we can do things differently and what we can achieve. And you know, there, there are people who have done that, John and Sean are great examples, but they've also been out many years now. The longer people are out, the more distant it seems. You know, I've, I've been in a unique position here where I've been able to interact with a lot of people over the years. Um, and I know that between the guys in here, the people who are out there in positions of influence and power that have the ability to you know, change things within the system. They need more success stories, and I look at that as you know that like that's definitely part of my responsibility. Because all we hear about is the negative. We hear about the, the men and the women who don't make it, the ones who unfortunately end up dead or end up back in prison. And we need more success stories in order to earn, you know. Uh, or show that we deserve another chance. And I'm going to do everything in my power, you know, to, to help pave the way for others, just as Sean and John and Michael Santos and Chef Jeff Henderson and so many others were able to do for me. So after I enjoy some time with uh, you and I and, and the, the rest of my family and loved ones, I'm really looking forward to us getting settled out there in Vegas, getting to work with John, putting all this knowledge and experience that I've gained over the last two decades, you know, to good use, helping other uh, currently incarcerated or formerly incarcerated men and women through what John's doing out there at Hope for Prisoners in Vegas. That's what I'm excited about. And again, it's all about looking forward. It's about the people. That's what's uh, most important to me. Yeah, I, I love it. And I just want to cut in really quick and say this. Going back to the kid who said to you, oh, I bet you can't wait to go out and party. And I think that was projection a little bit because he can't wait to go out and party. Like you said, most people can or whatever, partying or fulfilling, whatever, getting right back to the street. And I think that we are the people that are watching this are in a unique position where we're they're coming out a little bit ahead of the game because they do have support on the outside and I think one thing you and I have done really well over the years is we've gotten really excited about our future and we've talked about that and I think what I want to pass along to everybody who's watching this is how can you communicate that to your loved one how can you guys start getting excited for things because I was thinking in my head while you were talking who wants to be like, oh, dude, I bet you can't wait to get out to go back into prison to go help people. It doesn't sound exciting, but I think you need to find what excites you outside of street life. And that's what you need to chase. And that's what's going to keep the success going and the success in the relationship and the success outside of prison and all that stuff. So there's my two cents. Absolutely. Um, uh, 100%. You definitely need to focus on more of what you do want. And... The more time that you spend talking about it and, and really working on putting together whatever it takes to make that a reality, that's the difference. That's the difference between it being a dream and it being something that can actually come to fruition. You know, you, you got to be willing to take the steps that are necessary to, to bring it to life as well. So perfect for the beginning of a year.
Wise words. I love you. I love you too. Thanks for doing this. So that was cool. I would love to know what your plans are and how you plan on helping your loved one avoid going right back to the street and glamorizing all that and going back to criminal life. What do you guys have planned for the future? And how are you going to get excited about that? Let me know in the comments below. If not, if you don't have somebody incarcerated and you're here just to learn about it, I love you. What do you do in your life to get excited? What are you most excited about for Adam's first day home? Because, you know, selfish. <laughs> You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. Oh, please don't forget to subscribe if you like this content. Give it a thumbs up to let YouTube know that you like this video and I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. Okay, you ready? What's up, you wanna do this? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Shot a little distance. Is that better? Better. I didn't have it on speaker, that's why. I was trying to do too many things at the same time.